So, Brooke, were you able to go to the fair this year? No, I didn't. I missed it. How about you? No, I missed it too, but I love fair food. Everything is fried and on a stick. Can't beat that. You're in luck. In this week's Aggie Kitchen, Liz Miser is going to show us one of my favorite fair treats, funnel cakes. <laughs> now, this is my favorite time of year. The weather's changing, the leaves are changing colors, and also it's been the state fairs this time of year as well. One thing I love about the state fairs is the food. But why do I have to wait all year long just to get the food that I love? We can make it right here at home. I'm going to show you how. Today we're going to make funnel cake. For this recipe, you will need two cups of milk, a half a stick of melted butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of sugar, two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one egg beaten. You want to combine all the dry ingredients, which is two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda. In another bowl, you want to put all the wet ingredients. Two cups of milk and a teaspoon of vanilla. Separately, you want to beat one egg. And once you have that egg beaten, you want to combine the wet ingredients into a larger bowl and then slowly mix in the dry ingredients. Okay, now you want to add the egg. Now's a good time to go ahead and heat up your oil in a fry pan. You want to have the oil to be about an inch thick. While the oil is heating up, you want to mix in a half a stick of butter or four tablespoons of butter. And you want to be able to fold that right in there. Now, it wouldn't actually be called funnel cake unless you use a funnel. All right, go ahead and fill that funnel up, but make sure you keep your finger at the bottom of it so it doesn't drip out. And pour into the hot oil. You might need a knife or a fork to just push that batter down in the funnel a little bit. Take some tongs and go ahead and flip that over. And go ahead and put it on a plate. Okay, and then sprinkle some powdered sugar for topping. If you love funnel cake just as much as I do, this is a really great and easy recipe to make. I'm Liz Miser for Cash Rendezvous. Utah. Thanks, Liz. That looked yummy and pretty easy as well. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back with more on Cash Rendezvous after this. We are an art museum, so there are not too many museums that specialize in collecting art. And we collect uh, contemporary and modern art, which is very different than most art that's shown in the valley. We're directly next to the new performance hall. And we are always free, uh, and so it's a cheap date. <laughs> and it's a nice quiet place just to you know, enjoy looking at some different things that maybe you wouldn't see here normally in Cache Valley. You don't have to travel you know, to see the West Coast. You can just come here and see the artwork. Welcome back. So, when I was younger, I had all kinds of dreams and wishes. I'm sure we all did and still do, but how often is one of your wishes just to be healthy enough to go to school? Well, I did spend a little bit of time in the Czech Republic and Czechs always said Nazdravi, which means health to you. Try it, Brooke. Nazdravi. Nazdravi. Good. Brooke, you must be a linguist. Well, one young girl's dream is just that. I talked to her, and this story will tug at your heartstrings on this week's Cash Inspiration. Chloe England may look and act like a regular carefree eight-year-old now, but for the past four years, she's been fighting the endless battle of disease, pain, and heartbreak 
that comes with being diagnosed with leukemia. On March 4th of 2005, Chloe, at the age of four, was diagnosed with leukemia. She began intense chemotherapy and lost all of her hair. At, at one point she had to bathe, it was three times, a day. three times a day because of the chemo that she was getting. Getting, um, couldn't sit on her skin. On September 11, 2007, she relapsed again as the cancer had spread. She underwent a bone marrow transplant, chemotherapy again, and total body radiation. She lost all of her hair again, got bloody noses that would last hours. Her face and body became bloated and puffy, and she couldn't leave her hospital room at all. She just looked up, up at me with those big brown eyes of hers and said, Dad, I, <coughs> excuse me. She said, Dad, I don't want to die. <laughs> I, I think that was the hardest date for me. Her family and friends never gave up hope, and Chloe continued to fight. The Make-A-Wish Foundation became aware of Chloe's struggle, and they granted her a wish. So, what did she wish for? I told them that I wanted a camper trailer. Why did you want a camper trailer? Because I love to go camping. And she had that opportunity for the first time in a long time, just a few weeks ago. For now, her cancer is in remission, and she's finally been able to go to school and play outside with friends. She's a survivor. She's um, old beyond her years. For Cash Rendezvous, I'm Janelle Hansen. Chloe and her family plan on spending a lot of time camping this fall. She also looks forward to getting her ears pierced next month if her health continues to improve. Do you ever wonder, Janelle, what all the events are in historic downtown Logan? Brooke, there's so much going on down there, I can't keep track. I know this though, the Center Street Grill uh, downtown. I love it there, and I love their focaccia turkey sandwich. Well, Janelle, little do you know, there is more to downtown than just food. April Larson took, one of, took a, t a tour t on the seasonal gallery walk. Last Friday, people strolled along Main Street to take in some art by local and visiting artists. Every season, the Alliance for the Varied Arts, or AVA, hosts the Gallery Walk to get more people interested in art and programs they offer. The stops along the way are mostly downtown businesses hosting the work of various artists. A lot of them feature local artists, uh, like Trent Goodmanson is at the Art Center, and um, Jerry Furman is over at Furman Spring Means, so yeah, that's always fun to do local artists. I like that uh, Murrayman's, was it Furrigan's? It's sort of an F and it had all the metal. It's on the corner over there. Our show is the ABA members show and it's our way of thanking the uh, artist members for supporting us through the year and letting them showcase their work. I was actually surprised at some of the art. Some of it I just wanted to keep staring at. Utah Public Radio hosted an exhibit by internationally known wildlife artist, Bob Child. I only paint animals that I've actually seen in the wild. I've never done any that I haven't actually kind of got to know a little bit because they all have a different personality. And so I try to capture that. That's, that's my challenge when I paint wildlife. At Maya's Corner, Logan High student Anna Grates displayed her work, the first ever gold ring made at the school. I happen to have some scrap gold and a wax mold and a teacher willing to try it. I was happy with the results. Even businesses you might not expect to participate in the gallery walk open their doors to the show. A couple places which might surprise you are Mountain Place Gallery and S.E. Needham Jewelers. S.E. Needham has been here 113 years, so they've seen the gallery walk from the beginning. We like to sponsor, you know, or support whatever the downtown is doing. We probably have, I suppose, four or five, maybe 600 people through here this evening. Cafe Ibis featured the work of Raiden Card. 
Most of my work is themed around uh, in desert landscape. I want the people to have the same emotional response that I have while I'm out in the desert. And so I kind of punch up the color a little bit to make people really look at it and to really, you know, like get that impact. There's nothing like a nice walk, quality art, and some light refreshments. For Cash Rendezvous, this has been April Larson.